All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for our February presentation. We have the privilege of having Eileen Baker with McDonald's Corporation to present an exciting new acquisition from the corporate perspective presentation. Uh, but before we get started with that, I just wanted to make a couple of brief announcements. Uh, first up, next month we are presenting on project of the year presentations. Do not have any submissions yet for project of the year. If anybody has any interest or worked on any great projects, please consider submitting yourself for a project of the year. If you enter, you will receive a $25 gift card. If you present and win, you will receive a $100 gift card plus the recognition that goes along with being the winner of project of the year 2021. So it's a pretty big deal. Um, I encourage everybody to get out and submit your nomination form. It is available on IRWA Chapter 4's um, website. We tried to keep that nomination form pretty easy to fill out. So it's just two pages. I hope everyone considers throwing their name in the hat for that. Um, we usually like to have a couple of presentations for the March uh, meeting that we can all enjoy and vote on. Let's see here. Also upcoming, we've got a couple of awards that will be coming up in April. That'll be Employer, Instructor, and Professional of the Year. Stay involved. We look forward to seeing everybody um, over Zoom. It seems to be working pretty well, all things considered. So once again, I appreciate everybody uh, attending today's meeting. And before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and do the Pledge of Allegiance. And rather than share my own screen and mess with uh, my IT, I'm going to direct you all to look at Andrew Sorba, who has the American flag as his profile pick. And we can go ahead and say the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, 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 United States, States, States of America. And to, and to the Republic, Republic for which stands, stands, one nation, nation, one nation under, God, under God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, with liberty, and liberty and justice, justice, justice for all. Look at that. Great job, guys. Thank you for doing that. I am now going to turn it over to Diana Nowsley, the program chair, so she can introduce Eileen Baker and her presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Jesse. Um, we are so excited to have Eileen uh, with us today to uh, do her presentation on the um, uh, corporate perspective for acquisition. Um, Eileen is a real estate portfolio manager with McDonald's. Uh, she manages existing real estate assets in the Pacific Northwest. Prior to McDonald's, she was with 7-Eleven and Hollywood Video um, Movie Gallery in the existing real estate groups, handling a wide breadth of projects throughout the real estate life cycle, uh, from maintenance to renewals to closures and everything in between. Uh, she joined IRWA with the hopes of understanding more elements uh, to right-of-way projects. And um, so we're happy to have her. So now we get to understand that corporate perspective as well. So. Thanks, Eileen, and I'm turning it over to you. Cool. Thank you, Diana. Um, thanks for the introduction. Hi, everybody. Um, hopefully, you can see my screen right now, right? Okay. Um, sorry, I have three monitors in front of me, and I don't know which one to look at. Um, as Diana said, Eileen Baker, I joined McDonald's um, about a year and a half ago. It feels like a lifetime ago because so much has happened. Um, but I originally wasn't really sure that anybody would be interested in hearing a presentation about, you know, McDonald's and acquisitions from our side. But um, I think it is a lot different from what you guys see on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, hopefully this will be um, informative, interesting. Maybe you'll just take a couple nuggets, but um, I'm going to cover kind of a wide variety of things. So if there are any questions, um, I don't know if there's a chat box or if you wanna just interject and ask questions along the way, um, feel free to just jump in because um, I'll probably jump to a couple of different topics. So um, first off, just a little bit about me. Uh, as Diana mentioned, I, I think I was just destined for um, a career in real estate and I've been on the tenant side my whole life really. I uh, started at Hollywood Video Movie Gallery, went through a bankruptcy with them, which was so fun. Um, ended up kind of riding out when they started shutting down. Um, and then I ended up at 7-Eleven, was there for um, about five years. 
um, did a lot of um, lease renewals, lease terminations, subleases, just kind of a wide variety of um, the corporate side of real estate. And now with McDonald's, I do a lot more of this, the field-based world. So um, obviously right-of-way projects, um, cam issues, easements, maintenance agreements, things that happen at the properties. Um, so it's a lot different from the corporate, um, the physical headquarters perspective. I'm um, out in the field, so I get to see properties a lot more often. Um, but really my main um, goal and my my purpose really is just to protect the asset for McDonald's, um, protect the real estate. Generally, it turns out to also protect the franchisee or the operator's business just to make sure that they can continue operating. Um, so a lot of the time, instead of um, just saying corporate, I work with a lot of our operators, adjacent property owners, um, DOTs, right-of-way agents, consultants as well. Um, so just a couple things about the company before I start getting into um, more right-of-way topics. Uh, we also have um, the Ronald McDonald House Charities, RMHC, which we call it. Um, there's about 300 or so throughout the, uh, throughout the world and about 180 in the U.S. Um, these are by hospitals and families of children that are receiving care can stay here for free, um, which is a kind of cool thing that the company sponsors. Um, another thing that I learned, I never really saw this before, but the McRig, um, not the McRib, two very different things. Um, this is a massive truck, um, a restaurant on wheels, essentially. Um, I think there's only one, but it's based out in the Midwest and it gets deployed to a variety of locations. Um, I think the top picture here, it was deployed to Coachella um, of all places. The other, other areas, um, NASCAR, Talladega, um, but they also get deployed to um, um, like community events. Um, it was sent to Katrina to support folks that were helping clean up efforts, um, went out to Hurricane um, Laura, and actually it was deployed to support the National Guard when they were deployed to DC um, last couple weeks ago, last month. And I don't really wanna talk about COVID a whole lot, but I'll just mention, um, we had already placed a strong focus on things like our drive-through and delivery service, but it's just really kind of pushed that even more to the forefront of kind of what we do. Um, the left over here, we do a lot of these side-by-side -side drive throughs You may have seen them um, kind of in the Seattle area. So this is kind of a huge push right now to um, Uber Eats and DoorDash. We started those partnerships in 2018, 2019, and that's just growing. And um, mobile order pickup, you can order on the app, pull up to the parking lot, pull into a stall number, and they'll just bring out their food for you. Um, okay. And a little bit just on kind of the McDonald's model, they, they call it the three-legged stool. So between corporate, um, corporate employees are operators or franchisees, kind of interchange the names sometimes. Um, and our suppliers, the three of us all really work together to um, kind of keep the business running and two can't work without all three of them um, as much as sometimes they think that they could work without corporate. Um, but so we, we kind of operate a little bit different from some franchisors. Uh, McDonald's controls all of the real estate. So it's, um, it's corporate driven through site selection and if we are leasing or buying the property, that's all done by McDonald's corporate. Um, and we also do the construction as well. So uh, depending on what region it is, the operators or the franchisees in the area can apply for that store and then they, they figure out who's gonna operate that store um, instead of the other way around. Like I think Burger King, it's more of a, you license the name and the ability to sell um, those products, but the Burger King franchisor, uh, or fr franchisee, sorry, um, has to sign the lease, has to buy the property. 
Um, so nationwide, there's about 14,000 restaurants and 1,500 operators. Um, in the region that um, my colleague and I focus, um, it's we call it a field office, Walnut Creek Field Office. It's all of the Pacific Northwest and Northern California, um, including Alaska, Hawaii, Saipan, and Guam. Um, that's about 1,100 restaurants, 140 operators. And then the Western Washington area, which, um, which I handle and which is, I think, what most everybody here is interested in. Um, everything from um, Blaine, Bellingham, south to like the Cal Cowlitz County area, um, and then east until you hit um, the forest, the county line out there. And with all of these restaurants, um, over the past few years, we've had a huge push on um, remodels and um, construction. So a whole lot of updating. Some of these restaurants were in desperate need of um, some facelifts. So we've done a lot of construction projects lately um, and we're still pushing through and, and doing cons consistent remodels, updating the dining rooms, updating the roof lines. You can kind of see this, um, the old school roof line that we used to have. Um, so they just kind of remove that, straighten it and make it look a little bit more modern. Um, okay, getting into a little bit more of the right-of-way world. Um, it's way easier if we own the property and we do about 55 to 60% of the time. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to go through a project um, and document everything, but obviously we don't always own it. Um, some of the pros when we do own it, it's, um, it's a guaranteed ability for McDonald's to negotiate the acquisition. Um, we can work directly with you guys on, um, on the details of the project and documentation. If there's a landlord involved, sometimes uh, if they're negotiating, they don't care about what the improvements are in the area. They're more, more focused on the value of the land. Um, so they might not notice, oh, in this TC area, there's this improvement or this access or um, those things that are more something that the business is interested in and not the landlord. And um, just other different types of properties between ownership. Uh, we have what we call a co-brand. It's when it's a restaurant that shares a building with a convenience store and there's a gas station out front. Um, this can be either owned or leased, but between that, it's either uh, McDonald's that kind of controls the business uh, or the building really and the gas station is our tenant or vice versa so you can imagine between owning and leasing having a convenience store and mcdonald's there's just so many different people involved um, and in one situation that i'm experiencing right now and very recently um, our tenant is the c-store operator and there was a memorandum of lease recorded. So uh, when you guys are trying to clear title, that might come up and it's um, something that you just have to, um, to try to clear before you can close out the project. And also between a franchised and a corporate run restaurant, most of the restaurants are franchised, about 95% of them are. Um, the ones that are corporate run, we call it McCopco, Donald's operating company. Um, they do operate kind of like a franchisee. They, um, they're they very focused on the building, hitting their budget, um, sticking to you know their plan. Um, and they're very involved in these projects, but they don't have the same, um, I guess, financial ramifications uh, that a franchisee who actually owns his restaurants would have. Um, so they just kind of look at them a little bit differently, but they, they're still very involved. And um, the entities that we have can be just kind of a nightmare, although ultimately we get to the same end point, but it just further complicates documentation. Uh, we can own property under McDonald's Corporation, McDonald's USA LLC, McDonald's Real Estate Company, Archland. Um, if you saw the movie, The Founder, Franchise Realty Investment Trust, um, that was the company created to hold the properties. 
Um, that's not really something that is very active, but some properties are still held under those that entity. Um, so just depending on whichever one this is, it's it's a making sure we have the right W-9 and the right corporate resolution and um, the deeds are in the right entity. And getting towards the acquisition, um, I probably should have prefaced this by saying on, um, on the property ownership side, on, on this side, we refer to it in multiple different ways, I guess. Um, I know, I think the preferred is acquisition. We do call it taking, a fee taking, a temporary taking. Um, so I might slip up some of the, um, the different types that we're talking about. But ideally, when we receive notice, um, we'll understand the project, enter into negotiations, and then complete the project, close out the transaction. Um, but obviously that doesn't always happen. Um, and usually the complexities are from internal approvals. Uh, there's just a lot that goes into reviewing these projects. Uh, there's so many people involved. Um, we will get to that in a second. Uh, so when notice is received, um, if the first is trying to, um, oops, sorry, move my notes a little too fast. Um, wrap, just wrap my head around the project. Where is it? Who's involved? Um, is it a city or county, a DOT, regional transit? Um, if we have the correct contact information for everybody. Um, and ideally just making contact with whoever's kind of the point person right now, the, the agent or consultant, just to at least say, I, you know, we don't really have anything to talk about right now, but here's my contact information. We got this notice. Um, but I am the person um, that you'll be working with uh, representing corporate on this project. Uh, and I know a lot of the times it's just the hardest to figure out who you're supposed to be working with. Um, determining the scope of the project uh, on the front end, it's, uh, it's hard to tell until you have you know, full design, but um, is the building gonna be impacted potentially? Uh, what improvements might be in the area, just at least trying to figure out, you know, where, where things might stand. Um, and then if it's pretty early in the process, sometimes we just kind of sit back and wait to say, okay, well, we made contact, send me plans when they're updated or more finalized um, and we'll be in touch. But at this point, um, you know, sometimes it's hard to get some of the internal parties involved although I know the operator always wants to know what's going on, um, especially if you know they hear about projects happening in the neighborhoods um, and if word gets to them and they are caught off guard, that's just something that can um, throw them for a loop. But uh, legal also wants to know, legal's always very involved in these projects. Um, accounting and finance don't really care until there's something more tangible. Um, and entering kind of more into the negotiation phase. If there are solutions um, that we can propose that might just lessen the impact to the property, it's something that we would try to do. Um, if our access is being impacted at all, if um, kind of the, the flow through the parking lot, entering into the drive-through, things like that are, um, are impacted that we could potentially get around. It's you know something that we would try to be able to do. Uh, determining the value of improvements, uh, obviously things that fall within the acquisition areas or the temporary areas. Um, some are pretty obvious. Some are um, not not so much. If there's a sign in there that um, is an older sign and it can't be relocated, it would have to be a new sign. We'd have to figure out um, the difference between you know, the existing value of it and then actually erecting a brand new sign. Um, 
restoration, if it's going to be done as part of the project, or if um, we as the property owner have to do any of the restoration is something good to know. Uh, appraisals, I generally like to be present for, um, just, just to be able to see on the ground where the boundaries are for these areas. Um, I'll show you in a second a couple plans, but sometimes based on the plan, it's hard to tell you know, what we're looking at. Um, so if I can physically be there and say, oh, okay, it runs just past where this line is, but it doesn't actually hit, you know, this area of landscaping or the parking lot or sign or anything. Um, it's just, it's nice to see those in person. Uh, if we generally, I, I think that the appraisals are probably going to be pretty consistent with what we would get. Um, I haven't seen one where I would think that we'd need to get our own appraisal, although I know it does happen. Uh, if we're really far off, then we'll probably get our own. But um, if, if it's pretty straightforward, I think it's not that big of an issue. Um, and with construction memos or um, TC language, that's where we just, we put in a lot of information to kind of outline um, what the project, uh, what the scope is, I guess, set the parameters on um, time and blocking off access. Um, to, since we're not um, compensated for loss of business, just making sure that we um, are not, I guess, burdened more than we really need to be. If, uh, if we've already agreed that we don't need to have access blocked off um, to go through with this project then. Um, just having that detailed and documented is helpful. Um, so this is an example of a plan that, that we've received. Um, I'm not showing any of these to call out any projects. I actually don't think any of my examples are in Washington. Um, but so this is something that we received as part of kind of the notice. And you, you can see that it's very clearly defined what the areas are. It shows um, the existing right-of-way area, the proposed permanent right-of-way area um, or the acquisition area, and then the TCEE area. So it's, um, it's very obvious where these areas are, but me as a non-surveyor um, non can't really tell where this is. Uh, so it's nice to have these overlaid onto an aerial or at least just have dimensions. Um, you know, I can't really do too much myself with just station descriptions. Um, so we went back and we asked, hey, can we get this overlaid on an aerial or can you, can you stake this and take pictures or something just to, to show us um, in more layman's terms what we're looking at. So for this one, um, the uh, engineer was able to take these pictures and kind of draw out where the two different areas were, which is so much more helpful. Um, and we can put this in our file just to say, okay, this, especially on this side, um, this sign is in the temporary area. It's not in the um, acquisition area. So as long as it's not disturbed as part of the project, then you know we're not too concerned with it. Um, another example, we'll start getting a little creative here. Um, so this one wasn't that big of an impact to the property. There's um, one fee area and two TCB areas just right at the corner. Um, so they're pretty small. So it was pretty easy to tell that it wasn't going to be, you know, impacting a drive through or um, curb cut or anything but still couldn't really tell where things were. Uh, so I use my paint skills and pull out a picture to um, uh, overlay kind of the areas that we're talking about. Um, I rely on this app that shows property lines over aerials, I think on a daily basis. Um, so this is kind of one of those where I utilize that and just dropped in where these areas were, I was able to visit this one and it was staked so we could confirm in person, okay, this is where it was. 
um, and it didn't really have any impact. Over here to our sign and up here was just blackberry bushes. Um, so no issues there. And um, this one um, kind of makes me laugh thinking about it. So this was really the only plan or drawing that we got. Um, and you know you can kind of see the outline of the curb for the parking lot, but other than that, it was kind of hard to tell. Well, where's you know where's the boundary? Where's everything supposed to be? Um, so I wasn't able to get anything overlaid onto an aerial for some for, for one reason or another. Um, but I did get um, I think two pictures that showed the stakes in kind of the farthest points that. The end point over here, the point where it kind of starts curving, and then the end point over on um, on the left side. So using that, I just overlaid it onto an aerial myself. Um, and I know these aren't totally accurate, uh, but it at least gives us a picture of what we're trying to look at, what um, what is in the area. And using this, um, got even more creative with Google Street View. Uh, this was a project that came up last May, so it was definitely not a time when we could travel. Um, so spending a lot of time on Google Street View. Um, so getting creative with kind of describing where these areas are. And this was really just mostly for the benefit of the operator to say, um, hey, this is where the temporary easement is. Uh, whenever the road project does happen, this is the area that um, that that work will be happening on. Um, so they didn't have to worry about anything coming into the parking lot or um, up the um, up the street into the curb cut. Okay. So with our internal approvals, um, there's there are a lot of departments that get involved. Um, I mentioned the operator and Macopco. Um, they stay involved throughout the whole process. Um, they do need to provide consent for anything that happens to the property. Um, it also relates to their uh, franchise agreement because um, they are um, operating a restaurant on a specific lease premise. So if that changes, um, it has impacts onto their agreement as well. Uh, field finance, I, I kind of look at field finance as more of... Um, the group that keeps things equitable between corporate and the operator, um, although they are technically corporate. Um, if there are just different agreements that happen with the landlord um, and the operator, um, erroneous payments, um, expenses that come up that, you know, if the operator can't afford to pay for one huge project at one given time, then you know, if they'll they'll work with corporate on certain exceptions. Um, corporate accounting is um, their involvement in this is book value. So if we are um, uh, if we're selling part of the property, um, and that that book value is um, if it's too high and the compensation is not enough to offset that, then we have to take a loss. And of course, accounting you know, hates when we have to do that. Um, I mean, personally on our side, we don't care what book value is. It's like when you buy a car, they always push gap insurance and you think, oh, we'll, we'll never have to use this. But on the off chance that you do have to use it, um, if you don't have it, you just have to eat the loss. Um, and it just kind of sucks. Uh, construction has, um, they're a couple of years out on their plans for remodel projects. So if they ever have um, plans to remodel or plans to um, rebuild or redo the parking lot in any way, uh, they need to know about changes to the site. Um, the, they're also a lot more um, familiar with things like um, the ADA requirements. Um, if anything's happening with the sidewalk or our, um, our ADA ramp, um, up into the sidewalk, um, parking requirements, delivery truck access, um, if anything's changing with kind of the route that a delivery truck has to take. Because uh, those trucks, I mean, some of them are 53 footers. So 
Um, those are kind of hard to navigate around. And legal is involved kind of every step of the way. Uh, they review our documents, modify you know, all of the language, um, pretty much with the intent on just protecting um, the company and protecting the operator. And I mean, they're all about documentation. So if, um, you know, if we agree to something and we don't document it, then did it really happen? Generally, not really. So um, just having all of our paperwork in order. Hopefully with getting to the end result of a complete transaction. So um, coordinating compensation um, and not even just, you know, McDonald's getting the check, but then on our side, we need to figure out where it's supposed to go. A certain percentage or a certain dollar amount might go to the operator. So we have to make sure um, that does happen and it goes to the right people, the right um, groups in accounting, um, especially with people working from home now. Um, I think it, it just threw another wrench into things. Um, one of the projects that I was working on, I think they sent a check in June and we didn't, we didn't find it until October. Um, it just, it went from one office to another and got buried. So um, fun times of working from home now. And at this point, sometimes it's just to sit back and wait, um, especially some of the larger road projects, you have to get all of the acquisitions completed and then it goes to bid. So we might be waiting a year or two years until anything really actually happens. Um, and then in, in that period of time, you know, we might forget about it. The operator might sell to another operator and it's just all different people involved now. So um, we just always have to make sure that we have proper documentation everywhere. Um, knowing what the timeline is for these things, uh, just so we can, keep ahead of it is, is pretty helpful. Um, and then we know that construction timelines are, don't always stick to themselves. So if they need to be extended, if a TCE needs to be extended, um, that's where it's really helpful to have just the proper contact information for the person managing the project, um, like the, the city construction manager, or, um, whoever's involved on that side. Um, so that's generally the flow of how things go from our side. Um, but of course, it doesn't always just go very smoothly. Uh, I mentioned receiving the notice. Sometimes we just don't find out about these projects. Um, notices are sent to the tax payee, which generally it's our operator. Um, or sometimes can be our landlord if we reimburse for taxes um, and they get lost in the mail or they just, they don't get to somebody in corporate. Apologize for the brief technical interruption here. I'll just give Eileen a minute to reconnect. The meeting is complete without some technical difficulties. Yes. Um, Eileen, sorry, did I just did I just freeze? Okay, everybody no. on my screen froze and. <laughs> thought that couldn't be a coincidence. Um, site selection, did I, let me go back to that. Um, permanent impacts, when, um, when the development team is going into um, the site selection process, determining where we're gonna build a restaurant. Um, I mean, things like access, uh, ability to take a left in, left out, those things are um, highly valued attributes um, so if those are things that are changed in um, a project, that's, that's just a, a huge issue for us if, you know, if with that new access, if we wouldn't build a restaurant there, it's 
um, just something we have to try to figure out um, how to move forward with it. Um, if the TCE is large so that it impacts um, our access to the drive-through, um, if the TCE could be shrunk or if the area really does need to be that size, um, sometimes a TC area is more of a cushion than it needs to be. So if it could be shrunk a little bit to mitigate us having to close the drive-through, um, since you know loss of business is non-compensable, um, if we can kind of work through those issues, it's always very helpful. Signs, um, I, I talked about signs. An old sign generally can't be relocated very easily. Um, but things like um, if a sign is grandfathered in due to height or size restrictions um, and it's required to move, um, is that a variance that we could get approved or do we now need to go to, you know, a short squatty sign instead of our giant 50 foot road sign that we used to have? Um, we, it was like the wild, wild west back in the day for signs, I feel like. So, um that's always just another consideration. Um, or if a road is widening, a sidewalk is widening, um, do we still meet building setback requirements? Um, hopefully the answer is yes. And if not, we could get a variance because we can't just pick up a building and move it back three feet as much as I would really like to in some projects because that just would make everybody's life so much easier, I think. Um, and getting legal descriptions and surveys of both the acquisition areas and the remainder property. Um, I think the remainder property isn't something that um, is really focused on very much through the project, but it's something that, you know, from our perspective, it's important for our, our file, our documentation, um, strip of land or if it's a corner generally not that important but if it's in a regular shape or if it's kind of like a a funky shape in a weird spot on the property um having an actual survey done of the remainder is just it's a lot more straightforward than having to say this legal description minus this other legal description and not knowing what it is And probably not so much um, projects that you would be involved in, but when we do those construction projects, and we've been doing a lot of them, um, cities and counties have um, have tied dedications to um, getting permits or permit applications. So if they're um, needing to dedicate sidewalk, uh, or if they know that they're going to do an ADA project. Um, and we'll need to dedicate a corner so they can, you know, expand the current curb. Um, having to do that is, I mean, it's it's something that we do, um, but it just is another step. And we know that, you know, if there's an acquisition project that they have to do, it's you know, construction's timeline is going to be held up. Um, and they just, they want to go, they want to get their permits done. So, um, so. The last thing that I wanted to bring up were uh, just a couple of the proactive efforts that we try to do. Um, if we if we can lobby beforehand, that's something that you know we would try to do. The earlier, the better. We hear about projects um, in a neighborhood or in in a region, the better. Uh, a lot of the time, it's more with um, regional transit or uh, like a city a citywide project. Um, if they're putting in a median, can we work with the city on location of the median or can we lobby to put the stoplight in front of our restaurant instead of, you know, the restaurant next door, some, some different area. Um, it's, um, I mean, there are conversations that we will generally try to have and also the operator is involved in those too. Um, and our operators are also small business owners. Um, so they are generally very involved in the community. They're involved with um, RMHC, the um, 
Ronald McDonald House Charities um, and a lot of other things more locally too. So um, we try to get them involved and try to try to say, well, you know, it's not just McDonald's, it's not just the Arches, but this guy over here owns this restaurant. So, um, you know, he's a pillar of the community and um, we'd like to help. So um, that is um, essentially everything that I had prepared. If anybody has any questions. Does anybody have any questions? Please unmute yourself and feel free to ask or type in the chat box. Hi, this is uh, Sam Meldrum. Um, I work yeah. for Universal Field Services. And um, one of my questions is, do you folks have a list of the contact people for the different uh, regions to contact for right-of-way issues? Um, not exactly just yet. Um, I mean, for pretty much the whole Northwest area, um, it will be me. Um, my And actually, my boss and my colleague down in California are both on the line right now, too. Um, Glenda Hollenbeck and Yoli Matrenga. Hi, guys. Mm -hmm. um, so Yoli handles Northern California, and I handle Oregon, Washington, Northern Idaho, Alaska, Hawaii, Guam, and Saipan. Um, oh, and those actually see. roughly Sorry. equal the same number of restaurants. Um, but more nationally, um, it, you can just you can reach out to me and I can try to provide a contact person. Okay. Um, now let's say you move on, you get a, you know, a big job offer somewhere else. <laughs> Is there an easy way to find out who, you know, who to contact? Um, that's a good question. I, I know on our website, we do have kind of a, a regional real estate contact. Mm -hmm. Um, so the McDonald's corporate website, has um, kind of the the regional contact person, I guess. Um, so if you know if Yoli or myself or Glenda are no longer here, then that's probably probably the best bet. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And Yoli's an IRWA member down in her chapter as well. Oh, great. Yeah, I have a question. I'm sorry if I missed this already. This is Chris Anderson um, <clears throat> about the demographics um, in setting up a new location. Do you look at that um, pretty um, pretty heavily? I mean, what what is your uh, outlook on that perspective? You can answer um, that. I personally, our role doesn't really get involved in too much of the the new site development. I know it is something that they do look at. Um, I see Glenda, I don't know if she's able to unmute and if she wants to jump in, but she did used to do development for um, quite a while, if she wants to jump in at all. But no pressure. OK, thank you. Got a question for you in the chat box. Kristen Butterfield asks, <clears throat> What's the time for acquisition to be processed through your company? Oh, um, that depends. Is that a horrible answer? Um, I mean, if it's pretty straightforward, one of those drawings that I showed you, the one that was just the, the two corners, um, you know, it's there was a minimal um, permanent easement area and the TC was very small. Um, we owned that property. We had one operator who was very cooperative. Um, I think that one was, we might've been able to complete that one in like six or eight weeks. And that's, um, you know, getting all the documentation straight, having legal review it, put in the language that they need. Um, but when, um, you know, I've been working on one that I'm trying to complete right now for the past year. So <laughs> it really depends on just the impact of the property. Um, that one that I've been working on for a long time. Um, and I, I know I saw Steve with Universal on here. Oh, there's Steve. Um, I mean, that one, we do own that property, but uh, it's a co-brand. So we have an oil tenant um, and it's removing access and it's 
it's a lot more impactful to the business. So it just, it goes through a lot more, um, I guess, people's reviews um, and critiques. So that one can, things like that can just take a lot more time. That's a great question. It seems like uh, as a global company, you guys process acquisition relatively quickly, all things considered. It's, I think because of the site selection, um, they just, there are properties that tend to be hit by project like this, um, road widenings, corner widenings. Um, I mean, we just, we look for the same attributes, I guess, um, that like regional transit authorities might be. So I feel like it, we, it happens a lot. <laughs> so we just have to figure out um, how to handle them. Yeah, Eileen, uh, this is Sam again. Have you been impacted? Has uh, McDonald's been impacted by uh, installations of a lot of roundabouts lately? Or? <laughs> in in my area, for sure. I know that's a really popular thing in kind of the northern Washington area. Um, but uh, yeah, I I've seen quite a few. I know I'm I'm working on one with Diana um, out in eastern Washington. Um, or no, sorry, that was a roundabout that then did not turn into a roundabout. Um, but yeah, there's quite a few. I think it just depends regionally. Um, I think it's probably not as popular in um, in like some dense metro areas, but out more rural, definitely see a lot more of those. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? None. Well, Eileen, thank you very much for your time today and your presentation. Thanks. It was a really excellent presentation. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks for um, everybody that hopefully learned a little bit of something, even if it was just about the McRib or the McRig. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be in touch uh, in the coming weeks. We will have a nice little speaker gift appreciation gift for you. Um, so she will be following up with you later for that. Um, but we appreciate you taking the time to meet with our group and present. Yeah. Um, your presentation will actually be hosted on our IRWA Chapter 4 website in the coming days once we have a chance to process this video and get it uploaded. Uh, so if anybody missed any of the presentation, you can uh, look for it there to take another look at it. And uh, next up is our March presentation. That will be on March 10th same time 11 30 and hopefully we have some excellent project of the year presentations that can uh, give this presentation a run for its money this was great any last comments questions feedback great job eileen thank you so much yeah thank you guys yeah. thank you eileen thanks for having me thank you eileen thank you very much everybody look forward to seeing you all next month okay bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you.